Even when you feel low, you can still go Even when you feel slow, you can still go Even when there's no hope, you can still go I never answer to no man, I still go Go, go Yo, yo, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages? As we always say, it is your hostess with the mostest. It's PKR, Pastor Keenan Riley, back with another episode of People Suck, Shout Me Down, uh, but love them anyways. You know, that's the part that we never want to hear. We just always want to hear the People Suck part, and we agree with that, and then we tune everything else out. Uh, but, yes, they do, but we are called to love them, man, and we're going to talk a lot about that today. If there was ever a episode that would probably should be the pilot episode of the whole thing <laughs> it should probably be yeah. today um, season three starts today yeah, yeah. exactly People man suck, them anyway. um but uh but yeah as always uh, if you haven't heard him chime in that's my sidekick nicky nick and uh man i tell you what man today 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 we took a swing at the church uh, mm. not our church our church is perfect uh, no uh, we <laughs> so took every pastor or- a, right absolutely I serve the best have you mm. always heard that my I, church is the church yeah my church is the best I, I pastor the best church this mm. side of heaven until I get moved to the next church <laughs> <laughs> so yeah uh, but uh, man we talked a lot a lot a lot a lot today about the topic sinners welcomed Sinners welcomed, which means that we open up our doors to anybody and everybody who has a heartbeat and a pulse. Just not the Democrats. No, see, <laughs> you done started it off. Um, Nick is an example uh, of what not to do, uh, what not to say. No, um, but no, seriously, anybody and everybody, Democrat, Republican, independent, uh, black, white, Cuban, Asian, gay, straight, um, you know, if you're having problems figuring out who you are right now um it doesn't matter man like we 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 open up our doors uh to each and every person um does that mean that we agree with you does that mean that we you know does that mean that we have the same views uh as you Uh, absolutely not what it does mean is that we are connected that we are uh, driven uh, with the purpose of getting you to know who Jesus is, not what not what our opinions are, not what our views are, not what uh, you know, not what our process is, but who Jesus is. That is the single most important thing uh, that I feel like that a church can do. People may disagree with me. People may be like, ah, oh, well, Pastor Keenan, there's so much more. Uh, but like I'm a telling merch you, store. a merch store that <laughs> yeah, that yeah, is pretty important. Uh, yeah, that is true. Bookstore, yeah. coffee, yep. uh, coffee and donuts and stuff. I feel like that is important. Uh, but getting people to Jesus and and getting that relationship with Jesus because I don't know, man. Let's take a lot of stress and a lot of burden off people today. You can't change people. You can't change people. Um, it's crazy uh, that that people truly believe, and I was this way for a long time. We've had three podcasts before, we're now we're taping this podcast. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but but it's so crazy, and I used to be this way myself that I used to think and believe that I could change people that 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 I would that I could say something Nick I could post something I could mm. preach something that's going to be the one that's going to be the one man that 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 they are going to change and two likes then, <laughs> yeah right <laughs> yeah well I posted at the yeah. wrong time man uh you know whatever uh but uh yeah I used to think that man and I would get so I I told people I tell people this all the time I would get so frustrated at the end of services uh sometimes where I felt like I would preach my guts out man and just yell, scream, fuss, handstands, clowns coming in, Kona ice afterwards, uh, uh, <laughs> camel rides, free camel rides. Uh, no, like, I, like, just man, you felt like that you gave it all, mm-hmm. and then that song would play, and like you're just waiting for like one weary soul <laughs> to, to make, wander up here. to make their way down the aisle just to come up and pray, man. And then it's just like nothing, crickets, man. And mm-hmm. you're like, oh my gosh, man, what is happening? And so then afterwards, like, I would beat myself up. I would be like, ah, is it me? Is it the people? Like, did I miss the mark, God? What's happening? And and I truly, man, truly, I, I was saying today that the freedom, there's a freedom in knowing that you can't change people. 
No, no matter what you do, how hard you try, mm-hmm. the, the, the process that you set up, you can't change them. What you can do, though, is love them. Now, that's crazy. I know. I know. I know. I know. Because it's like, oh, well, Pastor Keenan, you're giving them a free pass. If you just love them and nothing else, right? Mm-hmm. But what did we talk about today? Luke chapter 10. We talked about how Jesus looks at the Pharisee and he says, Love God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. And he said, if you do that, then you, my friend, will surely live. And I thought to myself, man, how important. Like, we, we don't find anywhere, Nick, in that scenario where, where Jesus is like, go out and club everybody with the word of God. Mm-hmm. Go out and make a stand up on a hill and preach to everybody that they're wrong because they don't agree with you. Go out and make sure that your voice is heard over everyone else's. I don't see it. I see Jesus looking at a very quote unquote religious person who was who was who was not letting the word transform and change their life, but they were, you know, uh, being that uh, acceptable person out in public and and saying, "Hey, if you just love people and you love me, we'll be okay." And and it's like I I don't know if we. Uh, I don't know if we have a problem. Uh, we have a problem, but I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if we have a problem, like if that's too easy, mm-hmm. if we try to make it more complicated than that, or if we feel like we have to do more than that. I don't really know where the problem or the struggle is uh, with that per se. Maybe it's because we always want to be right. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's because we always want to be heard. I'm not for sure. But but we, as, a, as, as the church of Jesus Christ, uh, not of Latter Day Saints, uh, but just of Jesus Christ in general, man. I feel like we have a huge, monstrous problem, disastrous problem, of of wanting to be right and wanting to be heard, but not wanting to love regardless. Yeah, I, it is very tough, you know, because I think it's you know you try to ask yourself where does it start, you know, at what point do we get the idea of you know we have to make people look like this talk like this behave like this uh you know at what point in life do we decide that we want a bunch of cookie cutter versions of ourselves mm-hmm. uh which is weird because you know if you think about it you know if, if we were projecting our own uh down spot downfalls and our own insecurities on other people and we're like you know i want i want to set these high standards because if nobody meets those standards that means i'm i have value yeah uh you know or it's just like if if i set these standards and nobody else can achieve them then that means i'm better than them Mm -hmm. you may not outright say it and i would argue that most people would never say that outright um, unless you have a narcissistic personality disorder uh but you know like i I think we do set a lot of rules and regulations and and, you know all these stipends and all these things that we have to do have to follow have to look like we set these things in place because we are um we we have our own insecurities you know we we struggle Mm -hmm. with you know alcoholism or 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 gluttony or you know envy or jealousy or you know we we, we struggle with addiction and we struggle with this or that or the other. And so it's just like a good old fashioned bully, you know, where we are struggling with something. And so we put somebody else down to make ourselves feel better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I think that that has been a, a problem that we've had, you know, and it's prevalent in our world all over the place. I mean, we see it in our schools, like I just said, with bullying, you mm-hmm. know, it, we, we see bullies you know, we see these poor little, you know, 10 year old kids who are, you know, pushing people down and making them feel worthless because that's how they feel like they have value. Mm-hmm. They feel seen when they do something like that because yeah. they don't have value anywhere else. Their parents yeah. aren't paying attention or whatever else. Um, and so like we, we see that and it's just so prevalent throughout our whole society that we, th- you know, we put these rules and these regulations and we become Christian bullies. You know, we're, we're like, you know, hey, you have to be this way, look this way, do this way, you know, and, and if you don't, then I'm better than you and you need to get better. Yeah. You know, it's like, and, and because of that, we, we are constantly not like I think because of that, no one in church, you know, no Christian feels like they are enough. And, and you know, we, we get in this mentality, this comparison back and forth where I'm not doing enough, or I'm not, you know, serving enough, or I'm not giving enough, or I'm not looking this way, or doing this, or reading enough, or praying enough, or this, that, and the other. Mm-hmm. And you know, we're not wearing the right clothes or, you know, doing this, that, or the other. You know, we, we have this constant feeling of inadequacy in the church. You yeah. know, we're, we're, we're not good enough. And God says that we're beautifully and wonderfully made in his image. And, you know, we, we are image bearers. Mm-hmm. Think about that for a second. We are image bearers of Christ, of the one and only true king of the universe. Mm-hmm. 
yet we are constantly comparing ourselves to other people and pushing ourselves down or pushing other people down so we can feel better than them. Or we're trying to meet other people's standards. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that that is, it's just such a toxic mentality that is, that, and it's not of God. It's not. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I think that's where, you know, we, we really just need to remind ourselves of that. Like, this is, if we are comparing ourselves to other people, if we are putting rules, regulations, and stipends on people saying, if you don't live up to my standards, you're not good enough. If we're making people feel like they're not good enough, if we are making image bearers of Christ feel like they are not good enough, that is not of God. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I think that that is something. And again, you know, because I, I, I'll say that, I know somebody will be like, well, you know, if we're all image bearers of Christ, what about this person who does this and this, or a murderer or a rapist or this? You know, but I was like, you know, the you know, at the end of the day, you know, we we as Christians, I don't feel like are accomplishing what God set us on this earth to do if we are making other people feel bad about themselves. And, and, you know, we, I think we've talked, and I, I like that this, this episode is kind of a continuation of last week in the conversation that we had, um, mm-hmm. you know, just do better. Yeah. And, and, and exactly, be better do, humans and be better or something. Humans, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, because I, I think, you know, there's just so much in it that, that it, it's, it's hard to cover in just one episode or one conversation yeah. because there's just so, so much confusion around it, you know, because we have Christians on Facebook, you know, that say, if you believe this, then you're not a Christian. If you believe that you're not a Christian, if you believe, and then we have, you know, people posting, if you do this or you say this or you believe this or you look like this mm-hmm. then you know you're you're evil and evil has just covered the world and you know it, 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 we, we are constantly in this cycle of where we as christians are putting other people down yeah you know it, it, we may we may disguise it under um you know i'm calling out evil for evil i'm doing god's work that's what we say you know it, but at the end of the day we're being bullies yeah. And it's we we don't want to admit it. We don't want to talk about it. But at the end of the day, we're being bullies. When we look at someone in in uh, drag reading the kids, you know, and we're going to be sitting there saying, "You're evil. You're a, you know disgusting, dis- vile human being." Like, okay, how's that going to win somebody to Christ? You know, I, I if if I if I were a drag queen <laughs> reading to kids and someone called me a disgusting, vile creature and spit on me and spit on and, me yeah. and like I I wouldn't want Jesus. Right. If, is that what Jesus is? Yeah. I wouldn't want that. Right. You know, I'm already somebody who struggled with identity my whole life, and now you're telling me that I'm yeah. disgusting and, and vile? Yeah. I'm well, going to go full-fledged the other direction. Then you're going to have the, the people on the other side of the aisle, though, uh, that are going to be like, yeah, but you need to tell them what's going on, and, and, and you need to stand up, and you need to say this, and you need to say Christians that. Christians are under and, attack. And, yeah, and, 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 and I get like I get where you're coming from, um, and, and I think like... Like we said, man, just because just because you are offering a open hand, a connection and a conversation, it doesn't mean that you condone what mm-hmm. they're going through, you know, or what they're or, or, or what they're saying or, mm-hmm. or, you know, whatever the case is. It's I've like I always said, like, I can love someone without furthering their agenda. Yeah. I mean, thousand percent. It's like, you know, I may not agree with what you're doing, but I'm still called to love you regardless. You know, I, I, I don't agree with certain stances and certain positions or certain dress codes or whatever, but it's like I still have been called by the grace of God to love Love you no matter the situation to help you Mm -hmm. no matter the situation not not again not like you said further the agenda but change your tire Mm -hmm. uh you know listen and have a conversation with you uh buy your groceries if you need it uh pray for you if you need it like that's that is what we've been called to do and and i feel like that we have taken this whole um truth and love like you know we need to preach truth in love like we've taken that whole situation and and we're standing on this mm-hmm. mountaintop yelling spitting mm-hmm. out verses spitting out you know spitting out verses of the bible and all of this good stuff but it's like are are you coming from a position of love when you say it are are you having a conversation with somebody or are you just yelling at somebody um you know it's it's kind of like i think about like with my kids sometimes it's like my kids know that i love them but they've been with me for a while but when i'm yelling at them like yelling like like voice up on a hundred yelling at them you know i i may go back and be like yeah but my kids know that i love them mm-hmm. but am i coming from a position of love whenever i'm talking to them like that yeah, i'm gonna Absolutely hit my wife not. she knows i love her she knows i love yeah, her she knows i love her she knows i, I just had a, I had a weak moment mm-hmm. you know i, I had, had a, weak a moment. and 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 so like i feel like as christians that we get into some serious trouble whenever we are quoting scripture, quote unquote. We know the scripture. You know, like we talked about the Pharisee today. The Pharisees know the scripture. It's not better than almost anyone. Right. It's not that you know the scripture. It's it's are you allowing the scripture to change and transform your life? 
you, you know, to, to, to a point of time where you're like, all right, man, like that same Jesus that reached down whenever I was broken and low and addicted and messed up and, you know, and everything else. Like it wasn't, it wasn't the yelling obnoxious Christian who got me to Jesus. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I think that's what sticks out to me the most. It wasn't the yelling, obnoxious, judgmental Christian who got me to Jesus. You know who it was? It was a, it was a, a backwoods, old school preacher who had a conversation with me about about life not not about jesus that's the crazy part Mm -hmm. but it was about life it was about keenan what do you want to do in life where do you want to be in life where do you want to go in life what do you want to experience in life now imagine all of that and imagine it with jesus because he makes it better and then imagine doing it jesus's way how much better your life could be. Not, hey, you suck, okay, number one, you don't come to church, you're a horrible person. Uh, Oh, yeah, by the way, like, you're having trouble figuring out who you are right now. Well, please, by all means, don't come to church because we're going to tell you you suck and you need to go back home. Um, You know, it's like we're we're not connecting with people anymore. it It literally breaks my heart. That that Christians are surprised by what is going on in the world right now. Mm-hmm. I've said this time and time again. If you would read your freaking Bibles, if you would and open I didn't them, say freaking, no, I'm yeah, just yeah, right, yeah. Uh, if you would read your Bibles, man, you would not be surprised by what's going on in the world right now. You would not be surprised by the confusion. You would not be surprised by the separation. You would not be surprised by people listening and creating their own gospels you would not be surprised by that because you know that this stuff has to happen Mm. the bible predicts this stuff to happen and 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 really what the holy spirit ministered to me the other day is that us standing up and yelling from rooftops and mountaintops that people are sinful and they're going straight to hell i i understand where you're coming from and and you want people to repent and turn from their ways i get it but it's almost like we're trying to alter God's plan in the process. Mm. And, and I want us to get this today. So we're forcing something. Yes. It, you are not going to alter God's plan. God's plan is for man to fall away from him so he can have a reconciliation through Jesus with people. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the plan. I don't know if you know this or not. The plan is is for Jesus to delay his coming as much as what he can because his plan is that no man shall perish not knowing him. That's his plan. We can't deny that. We can't, we, we, we can't like, we can't like morph and make something happen to where that plan doesn't exist anymore. It doesn't happen. The plan is, is that one day, one point, one time somewhere, Jesus is going to split that sky. The sound is good. The, the horn is going to sound and that's it. Ball game. It's over with, you know, like we can't change the plan. What we can do, Nick, while we're here now, I, I don't know, man, like, like, I see this. I read this today, Luke chapter 10, 25 through, I think, about 37. You can go back and read it if you want to. But what I do see today is Jesus making a prime example out of religion and out of relationship. Religion says, I want to live where everybody else wants to be me. But relationship says, I want to love like Jesus loves me. Now, religion says... I want to look good for everybody, but when there's a need, I want to sidestep it. I don't have time for that need. That's your problem, not mine. Relationship says, like we read about today, I'm going to run directly to the middle of that problem, and I'm going to help that problem. I'm going to love that problem. I'm going to I'm going to pray for that problem. I'm going to carry that problem to where that problem gets better. And and so it's like we're looking at this. And by the way, we we figured out that Samaritan basically is a term for for rule keeper, right? For 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 somebody who actually adheres to the law. And so whenever you hear good Samaritan, you know, oh, it's the good Samaritan. Well, the good Samaritan is the person who is actually doing what they're supposed to be doing. So when you hear somebody be a good Samaritan, it's like, oh, is there not a good Samaritan? They're just doing what they're supposed to be doing. And and, and for Christians, man, I feel like that it's like it's so much easier to set up on that mountaintop with that magnifying glass, yelling at people, yelling at people. I'm talking yelling at people, like mm-hmm. worse than what I do on Sundays, yelling at people about their life, about their choices, about their situations. And it's like, bro, 
I'm telling you right now, like you are not offering heaven to anybody. You're sending people to hell. Mm -hmm. Like you're literally sending people to hell right now because Christians are shocked by sinners. Mm -hmm. Because why? Because we're not being good Christians. Because we're not reading the Bible and saying, oh, okay, well, this is supposed to happen. I know this is supposed to happen. So what should I do? I don't know. Maybe I should love. Maybe I should pray. Maybe I should get closer to Jesus. Um, one thing, and then, uh, and then you could talk. Uh, but one thing that stood out to me from last week's episode um, that, that, that you said is that if our first response is anger, frustrated or whatever the case is like then we need to be praying Mm -hmm. because that shouldn't be our first response our first response should be regardless of what the situation is man is to love people love people regardless whoever it is i don't care whoever it is love them regardless and if that is not our response then we are not where we need to be yeah, I mean, I think, you know, as Christians, our first response should be love. Uh, you know, again, uh, we, we see it, and, and again, it's just, there's been, you know, news story after news story. I've heard a lot of people, especially comedians, talk about how this is like the wildest, like, two or three weeks in America's history. <laughs> like, you know, we got people dropping out. We got different presidential candidates. We got, like, people getting almost assassinated. You know, like, we, we, we got, like, the Olympics and, you know, uh, all yeah. the kinds of crazy stuff going on and the opening ceremonies that everybody's up in arms the Dow, about. The Dow and yeah. NASDAQ just dropped like 700 points man in like one day Mm -hmm. uh they're talking job loss like the job loss ratio is horrible right now and 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 i mean you're talking about an economic collapse maybe you know i mean there's so much like worldwide it's like we were talking i think it was after the episode last week you know we're talking about you know major cyber security issues where like the entire world has you know major entities shut down because the Mm -hmm. computers went crazy with a an update yeah like it's just there's there's so much stuff going on in the world right now and all over social media and there's you know and i think you know we again get it backwards to where you know the the world freaks out you know mm-hmm. the world gets angry the world reacts the world cusses people out the mm-hmm. world yells at people the world flips the finger the world you know gets on facebook and you know makes posts and yells yeah. and argues and fights and shares and you know yeah. all these sorts of things but you know we as christians are not called to be the we're supposed to be a set apart from the world mm-hmm. um you know and, and to where you know when when these situations were, were are happening you know where you know our first if, if you're like i said last week you know if your first reaction is to get on facebook and make a post about how evil and contrite this group of people are or to get on facebook and to to argue or to post your political opinion and tell people that if they don't believe this then you know they're not a christian or they're not this or that you know if, if our first reaction is to get on there and cause more division yeah that is not the correct response you know we as christians are you know we, again we we always say you know if the church isn't united the world's never going to be united uh you know but the it, world's never going to be united it, exactly the, you know the yeah. world the world's never going to be united but the church can be mm-hmm. i feel it, maybe. like <laughs> maybe right yeah, maybe. yeah i feel that i feel uh, that yeah maybe uh we you know but again you know it's just you know we as christians you know we're supposed to be of one body one mind one accord you mm-hmm. know and, and, but yet we're on here you know again and i'll never you know i think it was you know god knows he has his own controversies but i'm like andy stanley uh, like I read a book by him um, after watching the Global Leadership Summit uh, a couple years back, Mm -hmm. and like I read this book, and it was a a book about politics and Christians' roles in politics and things of that nature, and it really was eye opening to some things that I never really thought about before. But Mm -hmm. you know, because there there really are you know, and I mean, I because I mean we've seen it. You know, there are Christians that will get up in arms uh, when you don't say something about situations that are going on right now you know like yeah. if, if there, there are christians who get mad and frustrated at, at you for saying you shouldn't have an opinion <laughs> right <yeah. laughs> about, about you're you know, just sitting on the things. sidelines and yeah, not saying you're anything. just lying. you're is, the problem it's as good as you know it's as yeah. good as you doing it and, but i mean like we we're as christians you know, we're we're trying to be peacemakers you know we're, we're trying to you know just to love people and again there's you know there's a time and a place where you know we should help you know say hey do you believe that you know this is right Probably not. You know, you probably say, you know, this is not, you know, biblically accurate. You know, you can't say that this is, you know, okay with God. You know, he doesn't like certain things. Yeah. You know, I mean, and it, it, that's, that's okay to say. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Can I ask a question? Sure. Or ask you a question? Sure. I mean, I you want to. Uh, <laughs> it may be a trick question. I don't know, man. But like, I'm sitting here thinking to myself while you're talking about, um, you know, uh, w- we've we've made a living out of what we call Christian apologetics, which is what? defending your faith right it's knowing it's 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 knowing the scriptures it's doing the research you know things like that we call it apologetics um 
as I'm sitting here thinking about that, and and that's the reason why I wanted to ask you the question, where, as Jesus is doing his ministry, as, as Jesus is even on the cross facing an unfair trial, where where exactly where exactly does Jesus in that moment in time condemn other people? <laughs> I, I, I'm just I, I'm sitting here thinking about that. Mm-hmm. Like like the crowd is yelling, "Give us Barabbas!" At any point in time, he could look at those people and say, "You're stupid. You're wrong. I'm the savior." Mm-hmm. But he doesn't. Yeah, I mean, like we see many times where you know he will turn around and say, "You know, Lord, rebuke you," or 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 he says, "Who do you say mm-hmm. I am?" You know. Who, who who do you like? That's what really I guess intrigued me. Like while I'm hearing you talk and I'm sitting here thinking about it, like like um, the the the. All right, so let's take the thief scenario really quick, right? Two thieves on a cross beside Jesus, so on and so forth. One thief says, "Screw y'all, I'm mm-hmm. done." Like pa, whatever. The other guy says, "You know, hey, look, like I don't know what he's talking about, but I want to be with you." You know. Where let me let me ask you a question. Even where in that scripture does Jesus turn around to that other thief and say, "Hey, you're wrong. You're stupid. You're going to hell." Mm-hmm. Where? Probably in the uh, American version. <laughs> in the in the, in the, the, the forty forty the year, in the forty to fifty year old um, the white ASB, male American white male uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's in that it's in religious, that Bible that Trump sells. <laughs> I, I guess here's what I'm trying to say in all of that. Is that if G I, I, if Jesus had every opportunity in the world to look at people and say you're wrong, you're stupid, you're going to hell, all of that good stuff, if he had the opportunity to do that, and and he still gave, it's not an opportunity, it's a choice. He still gave people a choice. You know, that's the coolest thing about Jesus is that he preached, he teached, he or he taught. He teached? He taught. taught. He taught. Okay, sorry. I'm still Southern Kentucky. I apologize. He preached, he, he taught. Yeah, he taught a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, so he taught, he healed, he delivered, he set free, he brought people back from the dead. Like, he done, he done everything there was to do to get people to believe that he was the way, the truth, and the life. But yet he still gave people a choice. He still gave people a choice to believe in him, to accept him, to see him as that, or to go the other mm-hmm. way. And, and, and I think it, well, I know that it broke Jesus' heart if they made the other choice. But he also knew, because the Bible says he did not form heaven or hell, he did not form hell for anybody else but what the devil and his cohorts it's it's our choice to get there and i want us to understand nick that 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 somebody's choice to live the way they live is not personal against us it's their choice they have the same ability and the same availability to jesus as what we do we made a choice what was that choice to follow him the best that we could we made that choice, but in no regards should we denounce, put ourselves above, or feel like that we're better than anybody who chooses to live mm-hmm. differently than what we do. In that regard, we should take like Jesus did at that moment and be like, well, let me minister to the people who have chosen to follow me. Not me, Pastor Keenan. Not me, Nick. Not me, denomination. Not me, Baptist, Catholic, Methodist, Pentecostal. Not me that way. But the people who have chose to follow Jesus. Let's minister to those people, right? And 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 where we get so uh, butthurt, angry, frustrated, whatever, uh, with people, is, is that people, we, we take it so personal. If people aren't living and presenting their lives in the way that we think they should. We take it so personal that our retaliation is not prayer and love and fasting, seeking God's heart more. 
Our retaliation is, well, if you don't turn, then you're going to hell. That's our retaliation. Mm-hmm. Our retaliation is, if you don't choose our way, your way is hell. Mm-hmm. And while that is sh- true in the Christian faith, then you're still not getting to the bottom of having that conversation of why people choose that way to begin with. And what we talked a lot about today is that once we get involved in that, that costs us time, money, effort, uh, commitment, and it costs us, it inconveniences us. It inconveniences us from our daily schedule and routine. And I feel like one of the biggest hiccups of modern day church is that we want the look and the aura and the and the reputation like we love and like we care and like we are the saints of God. But in all actuality, we are religious people who sidestep people that truly need to be loved. That's all I got. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm done. Yeah. It's like it's like we're scared of losing our salvation. Uh, th- we're scared it, of losing our reputation. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, not that salvation. Too, yeah. We're like, like what we said today. You know, if we if I offer a fruition shirt to somebody, and we've had this happen by the way, like this is no joke. Um, we had a guy who wrecked an entire front row of a car lot. How is it possible? I do not know, but he did. And he tore up like six or eight cars in this car, in this car lot, front row. When the newspaper interviews this guy, he says, I just got out of service at Fruition Church. (laughs) And I was traveling back home and like he was doing some shady stuff, okay? Like he was not traveling back home, he was doing some shady stuff. But he says, "Don't go look this up." <laughs> yeah, he says this is no joke. He says this that he had just come from church, and you know, at one point in time in my life, I would I would cringe, I would hold my teeth together and go, "Ooh, <laughs> could have left that part out, sir." You know, but at the same point in time, I'm I'm at a different place and point in time in my life now. Where I'm like thinking to myself, you know, and, and going, you know, this guy was was doing some shady stuff, but he was also bold enough to say that he was coming from church. OK, now you may look and be like, yeah, but was church really helping him out if he was doing shady stuff? Preface reference. Go back to oh, about 12 minutes into the episode where we said you can't change people. Mm-hmm. You can't change people. So. For him to at least say, hey, I was coming from church, fantastic. That's great. Just trying to make himself look just better. Try, just trying to make himself look better. <laughs> I'm but, not a horrible person. I go to church. Right. Yeah, I go to church. Don't worry about these eight cars I just yeah. wrecked up here in the front no, row. I'm so sorry, officer. I didn't mean to be speeding. I was listening to worship music. <laughs> I think we are, and I said, I referenced this. I don't know if it was a Wednesday night service, Nick, or maybe a uh, may, maybe a Sunday service, but I referenced this. I, I the church has gotten so bad that that whenever people whenever people get involved in scandals, our automatic response is to cut ties mm-hmm. and leave them out on the island by themselves because we're afraid of our reputation. We're afraid of losing our reputation. Jesus' reputation was always in question with the religious people, not the sinners, the religious people. That's That was who mm-hmm. was questioning his reputation. And it's so sad because it makes my heart hurt because I feel like the church has become the Pharisees, mm-hmm. that we are questioning reputations of the church, yeah. not like- of people. But we are so afraid to get involved in systems and scenarios and scenes of people's lives because we don't want to lose our reputation. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I'm thinking of like, you know, if you know, why is it that our first response when we see a pastor walk into the liquor store? Hang on, I'm hungry. Do you want something to eat? I'm gonna go over here and get some nabs real quick <laughs> I'm or something. Good. I'm good. Okay, all right, you keep talking. Yeah, I'm good. All right, uh, but no, as go I was ahead. saying, like I said, I'll it's crazy. To me. Yeah, he's gonna be off camera for a second. It's okay. Uh, but again, I think it's important. For, I mean, it's, it's just an odd question, I think, to me is like, I'm like, okay. You know, why is our first response when we see a, a Christian walk into a, a liquor store or, uh, you know, any other kind of unsavory s- establishment? Why, 
<laughs> yeah, unsavory. Yeah, he's over there talking to him. We got a mic on. <laughs> but why is it that we walk into an unsavory establishment, or we see a Christian walk into an unsavory establishment, and our first thought is that they are going in there to partake in the unsavory? You know, it, we we don't immediately think, oh, he, I bet he's going in there to pray for somebody, or I bet he's going in there to to minister to somebody, or I bet he's going in there to do this, that, or the other. You know, our first thought is like we're going to associate this good person or what we consider a good person. We're going to now associate that person with something we consider bad. Uh, or something less than savory, or something unsavory. Um, you know, it, it's just it's just kind of odd to me that my first thought, or our first thought, you know, more, or most Christians' first thought, is that you know, oh, I'm seeing this could or this Christian person, you know, partake in something unsavory, or go somewhere unsavory, or witness something unsavory, and now they are unsavory. You know, it's like they've they've sullied their good name by just being associated with this other group of people or these other uh, entities or whatever else it may be. You know, our, our first reaction is that that knee jerk reaction of oh, you know, they must be. Doing doing something wrong now you know or they must be you know doing this that or the other they must be an alcoholic they must have sins they must have something in their closet they ain't getting rid of like we immediately jump to those negative conclusions rather than a positive one you know what if he's going in there uh to to talk to somebody to jesus you know about about jesus you know or lead someone to jesus you know what if he's going in there to to be an ear to listen you know they always say you know like a bartender uh is like a therapist you know so like what if a pastor were going into a bar to sit there at the bar and talk to broken people and tell them about jesus you know, that would never, you know, we would never think that when we see a pastor walk into a bar, we think they're having an alcoholic problem. <laughs> like we, we don't think that they're going in there to help people. And they probably are. Hey, yeah, probably if they're Baptist. Um, yeah, um, I am. they probably are. I, you know, I mean, uh, um, but yeah, it, it's just, it, it, it is crazy to think that that is our first knee jerk reaction is that they're, you know, they're, they're going in there to do something bad. And we talked about this last week, I believe as well in that last episode, you know, about, you know, I, and I mentioned that experience about, you know, going to the state Capitol and how, you know, these, the religious people were afraid to be seen with the, you know, the transgender rights community or anything like that. You know, they weren't there talking to people, listening to people, praying with people or anything like that. You know, they were mm-hmm. these two separate, you know, it's like a black and white situation. You know, these mm-hmm. people were here, you know, yelling about what they wanted to yell about, and then the Christians were over here yelling about what they wanted to yell about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, they weren't there wasn't any intermingling, and if there was intermingling, I guarantee you it wouldn't have been very nice intermingling. It probably would have been yelling and back and forth, and you're wrong, yeah. you're evil, you're this, you're that. You know, it, it would have been a lot of that back and forth, which again just proves our point of what we're talking mm-hmm. about this whole episode is that you know we, we as Christians are, are not doing what we need to be doing. We're not being good representations of Christ, we're not being good representations of, of love, grace, mercy, forgiveness, we're not being good you know, we're not loving our neighbor you know bottom line and that's kind of what you know the message was about that keenan brought today and you know it's kind of what this episode is about today is that we're not doing a good job of loving our neighbor and, and as keenan was talking before he we went to go get his peanut butter crackers uh they're as, amazing as he was by talking, the way they smell pretty I good. Just, I yeah. you want one i uh, know i'm good uh, okay. yeah but but again you know just as, as he was talking uh, I, I thought about you know god you know we talk all the time about how god gave us free will mm-hmm. uh but why is it that we as christians are trying to take that away you know, it, God gave us free will. God created us with free will. But we as Christians constantly try to take that away because, you know, we think, you know, that we know the right way to do things. You know, we, we don't want you to have free will. We want you to do what we want you to do. Wasn't it kind of crazy that every denomination thinks that they're doing it the right way? Right. Yeah, I know. And, and I think that's crazy. Uh, like you brought that up. I saw, you know, this meme. We talked about it, I think, several episodes ago. But, uh, like, there was a, a meme or something going around where it was like, you know, um, if – uh, if Paul was still alive, he'd be writing your church a letter or something like that, you know, yeah. something along those lines. But the the funny thing that stood out to me is that I had people in my timeline from multiple different denominations saying that, mm-hmm. you know, so they were sharing this meme and you're like, well, which one has it right? You know, and, and so it's just like every church should be getting a letter. <laughs> you know, like, and I think that that's that, that thing that we're kind of trying to go back to here is that it doesn't matter if you're Methodist. It doesn't matter if you're Baptist. It doesn't matter if you're Pentecostal or Catholic or Lutheran or, you know, whatever else that you are. You know, you're probably not doing things right. <laughs> like at the True. end of the day, you know, you're, you're, you're messing up. You're not loving your neighbor correctly. You know, and, and all the things that we've talked about throughout this entire episode, you know, and I think it's just where we talked about last year or last year, <laughs> last episode uh, about being a better human being a better christian you know trying to to do better be better uh you know love people better mm. and you know I, and i think that's what these last couple episodes have been about you know is just trying to to help the everyday christian what we used to call this podcast you know help the everyday christian you know learn that people suck but yeah. we need to love them anyway yeah one thing well two things really number one i think you broke the guinness book of world records for how many times you can say unsavory in or savory <laughs> In a, in a five minute span, that was a lot. Like whenever I walked to the room to get crackers and come back, I was like, "That man has made a whole speech out of unsavory." The, so that was pretty Pick it impressive. Up and preach. Yeah, that was, that was pretty impressive. Um, but number two, um, 
I think really uh, what's brought this on more in my life than anything is is watching. And we've talked a lot about what well, we talked last week about the Olympics and things like that um, is I'll be a thousand percent honest with you, man, is seeing this this outrage um, over this female slash male boxer. Mm-hmm. Um, just just a complete outrage. Um, and, you know, I'm not going to throw my two cents in because it doesn't matter. Um, but what hurts my heart more than anything is that nobody, absolutely nobody, has had a conversation with this boxer. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? About how they feel about nothing. Their past, about their life, absolutely. About their upbringing, about their I've seen trauma. Pe- I've seen people share Jesus stuff on Facebook and then turn right around, share that story about this woman slash man, whatever she is, type situation. With the words disgusting. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, with disgusting, vile, this, mm-hmm. that, and the other. And it's like, you, in one breath, you're sharing Jesus. In the next breath, you're damning somebody to hell, and you don't even know the situation. Mm-hmm. You don't even have a connection to it. And and it hurts my heart, man, to no end that people like that are more representative of the church versus people like us who are sitting here going, I love God you regardless because i want you to know about this dude who saved my life who turned my life around we can get you to this dude and this dude can change you transform you renew you refresh you like this dude can do it his name is jesus he's a he's an awesome guy but instead, we got everybody else, most everybody else, that's like, oh, this is disgusting, this is vile, this is this, this is the other. But nobody's had a conversation with the boxer. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Nobody's had a conversation with the boxer, man. That that breaks my heart, number one. Um, number two, what's really brought this on to, man, is that like, um, and everybody, everybody that, um, or people that I'm close to, man, uh, know that I was a huge, absolutely, and still am, huge uh, Carl Lentz fan, man. Um, I, I, I watched that guy preach. I watched I watched everything that there was to watch, man. I've listened to sermons and everything else, and, and I loved his passion. Um, it, you know, I, I loved his passion and his connection with people. Um, did he make mistakes? Thousand percent. You know, and I think mm-hmm. if you so listen, I. I think if you listen to him now, though, if you listen to to his testimony through that, he will tell you he was a drug addict. He will tell you that he was so wrapped up on um, Adderall um, that he he he. Why thought, you look at me when you uh, said Adderall? Because I was trying. No, well, I was trying to think of the word, okay. and I was look. I was like reaching. I was like, man, maybe you can yeah. hit me with it. <laughs> you just um, see me over here just scratch my arm. Yeah, right. <laughs> like I need it, man. But he will tell you, you know that. He had infidelity, that he was not faithful in his marriage, that, that he like he, he will be so forthcoming with that now, man. But to hear, I, I mean, to absolutely hear in four years how almost every single person in the church realm abandoned, turned their back, cut ties. I am not sacrificing my reputation mm-hmm. for you. You know, I'm not doing this. I'm, I'm not going to let Christian you, for you. Yeah, I'm not going <laughs> to let you do this, man. And you know, and it's like I, I'm looking at I'm looking at that situation and to hear it, man, to absolutely hear it because it's, you know, their life played mm-hmm. out publicly because of who they were. And, and and the mainstream media and all of that good stuff, man. But my my thing is is that that the same thing is happening across America and across this world today where literally where people fail catastrophically sometimes where it messes up life and instead of the church standing by them 
I'm praying for you. Let me help you. Let me counsel you. Let me get you a room. Let me get you into a program. Let me do this. Let me do that. Instead of that, it's like, let me cut ties. Let me separate. Let me push you away because I don't want to sacrifice my reputation. Mm -hmm. And that is a Pharisee. That is not a Samaritan. That is not somebody like, I don't know if Jesus would even look down right now and be like, I am proud of my church. I tell you that much. I'm proud of my church. They've cut ties with everybody. They've separated from everybody. Mm -hmm. They're just a little huddled group of people over here. Just like we have taken that whole be separate from the world. Like, like we've, we've taken that literally. Mm -hmm. Like we're like, Hey, forget you world. We're going to come collect over here by ourselves and we're going to feel really good and really safe and really comfortable being over here with people that look like us, think like us, talk like us and act like us. But Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, literally was walking the streets, sitting at tables with sinners, casting demons out of women, and then... And men. And men, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm thinking Mary Magdalene is where my <laughs> mind is going. But but I'm thinking like he's doing so many different things with so many different people, and, and it wasn't the sinners who were questioning him. It was the religious people, you know? And and I really thought, you know what I really thought about calling this message today is church sucks. Mm -hmm. That's what I really thought about calling this we'll call message today. Episode, uh, yeah, church, church sucks. sucks. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because I, I do, man. Like I, I want us to get better. I want, and I can't control every church. I can't control every person. But, but what we can do inside of Fruition Church is is to know that when people come in here, like we said today, man. Um, and I, if people know me, I, I was so uncomfortable for about two hours today because I wore a suit today, and not because I wanted to, but and because you can clearly tell if you're watching this, he is no longer in that suit. Oh, he is wearing yeah. a cutoff tank top. Okay, yeah, I'm in, in my cutoff shirt, my backward hat, where I feel the best at. Uh, but yeah, I wore a suit today, man, because I wanted it to be a representation of what a quote unquote good Christian looks like. You look the part. And, and that's the that's the people that that we've got it backwards. That's the people that we want to come through our doors. Is the good people, the Christian people, the people that look good and already worked out, and you know, and got own their, a business. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. They're doing. Oh man, they're mm -hmm. good, upstanding citizens in society and all of that good stuff. And it's like, no, 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 man. We're missing the point. We're missing the mark. The people and I took off my jacket and my tie and my shirt and, or untucked my shirt and took my my socks off and like like. We like we sidestep the people that look like hell. We sidestep the people that have a lot going on in their life. We sidestep them because they are they are 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 more time, they're more commitment, they're more prayer, they're more than what we are willing to do. Because most of us today don't want church. We want a a service that lasts about forty two minutes, two songs. A, a, a motivational message that will not affect your soul, but will feed your flesh. And then we want to go out in the world and wonder, pardon my French, because I'm mad now, wonder why we get our ass kicked all week long. Why? Why do we? Why do we? Because you want to know why? Because we're acting, we're looking, we're playing the part of Christian but we're not. We are absolutely not. We are Pharisees who know the word, but have not let the word transform our lives. And so we sidestep every situation where God wants to bless, work, and move in because it's inconvenient for us. And because it's inconvenient for us, and we're wondering why revival's not happening and why lost people aren't walking through the doors. Is because saved people are not going into situations and spreading the name of Jesus. Man, there you go. He's flipping a table. I thought I thought he was about to flip the table for a second. Pray, he threw his hands up in the air. I was like, oh God. pray for me. Yeah. I've got I've <laughs> got some peanut butter nabs in my in my system now. Yeah. I'm ready to go. I don't know what was in those peanut butter crackers? Pray probably, for me, probably bro. Probably all he thought I was using. <laughs> <laughs> but but, but, uh, but yeah, no. I think it is funny because like before we did this today, I told somebody back here in the back of the church, and I was like, either this episode is going to be him with his hair on fire, or he's going to be super calm and chill because he's worn out. <laughs> and I said, we'll see which one we get. It's fire. Uh, yeah, it's my fire, hair's yeah. on fire. 
yeah, man. he's on fire. Um, but again, you know, I, I think, and again, yeah, we, we can sit here and I think with a lot of the words and the language and the things that we've said and how we've said it and, you know, the, the motions and all those sorts of things, you know, it, it sounds very, uh, you know, judgmental. You know, I, I think, you know, colorful. Like, like, yeah, colorful is a good way to say, it. but like, I think really what we're trying to say is that cause we're, we're just as guilty sometimes of doing the same thing of, you know, we will have acting high and mighty of getting frustrated, getting angry with people, getting, you know, all these sorts of different things. You know, I mean, if, if you can't tell from our conversation, we get irritated with people. You can't b- tell by the name of this podcast. We get irritated with people. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, we, we struggle with those things just as much. And I think really, you know, we're, we're speaking to the listeners or the viewers just as much as we're speaking to ourselves when we say we have to check our heart position. You know, it, you know, before you do anything, say anything, post anything, where is your heart position at? You know, are you doing this to be seen? Are you doing this to be heard? Or are you doing this because it's the right thing to do? Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that that's the, the number one thing that we need to ask ourselves, you know, myself and Keenan. We need, you know, we need each and every viewer or listener to ask themselves because, you know, we are, you know, while we all have a separate personal relationship with Jesus, mm-hmm. you know, we, we are all parts of a whole. You know, we're, we're all separate entities with separate, you know, relationships with Jesus, but we're all supposed to be working together collectively. towards the collectively towards the same goal and vision that yeah. God set out when he rose to be, or when Jesus set out when he rose to be with God, mm-hmm. you know, to, to, to heal the sick, to cast out demons, to love people, you know, it's all these, these things that God told us or Jesus told us to do, um, that we're doing such a bad job of. Well, I told you, man, and like, uh, you know, I, I, I made the statement to Nick the other day. I said, why does Christians feel like they have so much power to preach about other people's sins, but yet they never have the power to cast these demons out. Mm-hmm. I'm done. I, I can't. I can't. <laughs> Flips table. Yeah, I, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm done. Because, yeah. because, we, because mm-hmm. it's a Pharisee. Yep. You know, I, I'm going to tell you, because I know the scripture, I'm going to tell you where you're screwing up at, but I ain't going to tell you how I can help you. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and to me, it's like, we're just setting, we're, I mean, we're setting people up for failure at that point because we're, we're condemning them, which the Bible says, uh, you know, the Pharisees, mm-hmm. huh, come on. The Bible says there's no longer any condemnation in Christ Jesus. That if you know Jesus, that you've got grace, love, mercy, forgiveness. But if we're, if we're looking at people and telling them what they're doing wrong and they don't know Jesus, then you know what is happening? We're beating them to death. Mm-hmm. We are beating them to death, man. We we are literally taking the Bible and we're using it as a sledgehammer on somebody's heart and life mm-hmm. instead of opening it up and saying, hey, hey, let me show you this part right here. Hey, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. You know God loved you so much that he gave his only son for you? That's pretty cool, right? Instead of having a conversation, it's like, let me know. Let me close that Bible and let me get the real thick one, right? Mm-hmm. The real thick one. It's got all the maps and everything else the on words it. Words are big it, enough to where the old people can read yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> let me get that real big thick one. And oh, yeah, by the way, I know you're not feeling the best about yourself. Let me beat you straight mm-hmm. let down. Let me make you to, feel worse. About let me yourself. beat you to hell. So mm-hmm. that way, you don't, it's not your choice anymore. I've sent you there. I feel better about myself because you know what? Hey, Woo, I done God's work today. Mm-hmm. Heck yeah, playing whack-a-mole out here. Yeah, <laughs> playing nope, whack-a-mole nope, with a Bible, nope. man. <laughs> it's insane. Yeah, I think I made the illustration once of like, I feel like sometimes we were like beating a dead horse and like, you know, we, we, we sit there and we, and we hit it 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 and we hit it. And all we're doing is wearing ourselves out in the process. Mm-hmm. You know, there ain't nothing that we're going to do. You know, and some people, you know, it's like we, you know, we say, you know, as the Bible says, you know, you're going to, you, there's so many lost, hurt, dying people out there that we can't waste our time on people who don't want to hear it. And we can't waste our time and energy on people who don't want to hear it. You know, it says in the Bible to brush the dust off your sandals and move on. You know, not to Mm -hmm. sit there and constantly berate someone and hit them and hit them and hit them and hit them because, again, you're just doing, you're just wearing yourself out and you're not going to have the energy to go to someone else who needs it. I'll say this. Now I'm really fired up. Let's go another episode. We're going two episodes today. Two episodes today. Uh, I will say this. In Luke 10, the story that we read today, it's funny you said that, but. In Luke ten, that story about the uh, uh, about the Samaritan and all and, and and the Pharisee and stuff, that literally took place right after those seventy that Jesus sent out and said, "Don't take nothing with you. If people don't accept you, shake the dust off, move on, all that good stuff." Like that story mm-hmm. literally happened right after that. And those people, those those seventy, they came back encouraged. Mm-hmm. They came, sorry, they came back encouraged. I got choked up for a second. They came back encouraged. And now, and who wasn't encouraged? 
the religious people, mm-hmm. you know, who the religious people were not encouraged. And it's like, oh, gosh, man, for me, I look and I'm like, are we encouraged because of one lost person? Or are we encouraged because Sister Sally didn't make it today, you know? And and I'm thinking to myself, what what was it we said today? Like, you think Sister Sally is your best member because she's been here every Sunday for 42 years. But Sister Sally is not your best member because Sister Sally's mentality is what has kept your church from growing mm-hmm. for 42 years. And for us to look at how that story transpired – people being sent out to spread the gospel to love people to give people a chance at heaven one day and they come back excited and a guy who knows the word who knows the word but doesn't want to live it is now trying to find a shortcut to get out of it that's insane to me yeah i mean it's like we as christians you know i think uh, you know we're, we're it's like we're called to be a breath of fresh air for the world Instead, we're just being more of the world. You we're know, we're, 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 we got people out here who are getting beaten, you know, beaten to death every day by the world, you know, by the mm. economy or by their jobs, by their boss, by their failed relationships, by their this, that, the other, by drugs, by alcohol, by whatever. You know, they're getting beat to death with anxiety, beat to death with depression, beat to death with prescription drugs, beat to death with, you know, this, that, or the other. You know, and, and, and we come out there and, you know, they're already laying on the side of the road. You know, we're going right, back to the right, story that we, right. we were just talking about, you know. They're already laying on the side of the road. Like, to be 100% honest with you, I'm almost surprised that the religious people didn't hit them with something. Right. Yeah, that, that dude just sitting there on the side of the road. I'm surprised the religious person didn't say, why are you naked for? Get up. You just felt that you just said, like, you know, right. sitting there yelling. But I was like, you know, because we, we, we're, we're guilty of that. We see these, these people, you know, again, we see these people who are hurt, who are beat. Who are crying? Who you know hate themselves? Right. You know, sitting out here every single day, whether they're in your your coworker or whether they're your coworker, whether they're in the class with you, eating lunch with you, at the restaurant working. You know, we we see these people, and you know, we we oftentimes again just neglect that they're going through things, that they have their own battles. You know, we see these people as objects sometimes. Yep. You know, we we don't think about what they're going through. You know, and you know that we we're we're out here every day in the world. You know, as you say, you know, all the time. You know, we're we're out here six days a week week in the world and one day a week we're supposed to give to god right you know, we're out here six days in the world surrounded by people who are beaten who are hurt who are crying who are bleeding mm-hmm. and instead of picking them up giving them love taking them somewhere where they can receive help you know leading them to god planting the seed watering the seed instead of doing those things yeah we're hitting them again yeah and again again and again yeah and again yeah. and again and again <laughs> like yeah. over and over and over we're you know again you could throw anything out there you're too poor you're too fat you're too skinny you're you know black you're white you're asian you're indian you're this you're that i mean you're you're male you're female you're trans you're gay you're you know just, all these different things we're you know we we hit and we hit and we hit and we hit and it, it, it's just like you know when is enough enough Right. You know, when are we going to, you know, to stop hitting, Mm -hmm. to throw down what we're hitting them with, Mm -hmm. to pick them up, give them, you know, as the story said, you know, give them our donkey, you know, give them a way, give them a way to get where they need to go. Mm -hmm. Give them the shirt off your back, the shoes off your feet, give them your, you know, (laughs) give them your car, give them your bike, give them something to get from where they are to where God wants them to be. One of the craziest parts, man, that I, I want to say this really quick, too, is that in that story, and I pointed this out in the service today, is that the Bible never says that he clothed that man, mm-hmm. you know, that he he, he, he treated his cuts, he, he dressed him up, you know, he wrapped him up, whatever, and that he put him on his donkey and then led him into town and got him a place to stay. The Bible never said that he dressed him. The Bible never said he gave him clothes or anything like that. And 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 I want us to get that, that like, that... For you to stick beside somebody, there's, to me, like, whenever you say, hey, like, if you're ever getting nervous in front of a crowd, just imagine them in their underwear type situation. Um, to Unless me, you struggle with lust. To me. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> don't, that's don't do a that. whole, that's a problem. Uh, but um, to me, you know, one of the biggest fears is being naked in front of people. You know, whatever that might be. Like, you just feel so vulnerable. You feel embarrassed. Mm -hmm. You feel exposed. You feel humiliated. That's really where I was going with this, is that you feel humiliated. 
But the crazy part is, is that the Samaritan stuck by this man. Let's just say he was naked all the way into mm-hmm. town and into that hotel. Everybody he's, looking at him. He's, st- him. Yes, he's stuck by him in the most humiliating time of his life. And that, my friends, that, my friends, is true love. That is true compassion. That is true Christianity. I'm sticking by you. I don't care how bad this situation gets. I don't care how humiliated. I don't care how nasty, how crazy this gets. It is my job, it is my duty, it is my calling as a Christian to love you regardless. Not worried about my not worried about my reputation, not worried about my association, not worried about any of that. I'm worried about doing what God has called me to do. And that is love you, that is stick beside of you, that is help you, that is be there for you. That's what I've called that's what I've been called to do, and that's what I'm gonna do. That's a lot. Man, I tell you what, we've been, we've been at this thing for what an hour now. Yeah, well, shoot, we've been longer uh, than that. We, like you I, said, we had like two or three. Podcasts. We've been talking. We've been talking <laughs> since three, and it's yeah, six. It's so six. Yeah, we've, um, we've but, been at it. Man, I tell you what, like I am, I'm just revved up and ready to go. Man, I hope I can get some sleep tonight. Uh, right. But uh, <laughs> looking forward to next Sunday, man. Next Sunday is our eight year anniversary uh, here at Fruition. So, man, I tell you what, very excited about that. I told him today, made a joke. I said, you know, God always gives me the toughest sermons to preach. The week before uh, is supposed mm-hmm. to be the, you know, the the highlight, the good time, man. So, you know, uh, I needed to preach today so we could have like 500 in here next yeah, week. What, I mean, Not, what's that? What's that? Julie always says, you know, like seven is the number of completions. So yeah. We're, right. we're completing eight, eight our is, seventh year. Yeah. And eight is, let's go out with the bang. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> next week we're going to have new beginnings. Yeah, and, new beginnings. Uh, there we go. That's see what, what happens. <laughs> yeah. So, but uh, if you guys have held on for this long, we do mm-hmm. appreciate it, man. And uh, we hope, as we always say, each and every week, we hope that something is said and done uh, that can change a heart and life. That's what mm-hmm. this thing is all about, man. Challenging, Challenging you to just change a heart and life change your heart and life man and, and, and just to be good to people be good to people man love people regardless and my god just just be the person that you want to meet on the street i mean that's literally what it boils down to so meet on the street in a dark alley at three o'clock uh, in the morning yeah absolutely and mm-hmm. and let you have a free pass in Chicago. Uh, yeah i let you have a free pass <laughs> man so we love you so much we thank you so much and again man until we see you again until we hear from you again we love you and be blessed even when you feel low you can still go even when you feel slow you can still go even when there's no hope you can still go i never answered a no man i still go 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 as always this is pkr and for my sidekick nick we say thank you very much for hitting that download button on people suck love them anyways be sure to tell a friend tell a family member to hit that download button as well and as always we say thank you be blessed even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answered a no, man, I still go. Go, go, go.